In this tutorial, we're going to work on some fast scarring techniques, just some really simple and fast ways to make some fake scarring in Photoshop. I'm starting with an image I took in the studio, and I'm just going to put some scars onto the model's face. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways you do it, uh, depending on the kind of scar that you want. And again, these are meant to be fast and easy. I'm going to duplicate my background layer by dragging it down to the New Layers palette. You can also do this by Control-J on your shortcut. This is because I'm going to be doing some destructive editing, which means that I want to have it on a separate layer in case I need to reference my original. I'm going to go over and get the Burn tool in Photoshop. That's O on the shortcut. And go down to the Burn tool. Make sure my range is set to Shadows. Exposure to 10%. I am using a tablet and a pressure-sensitive pen. You'll get best results out of that, but you can do it also with a mouse if you'd like. I suggest a pen, but it's totally up to you. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure that my brush size is around 10 pixels for this image. Depends on the size of your image, what you want. And uh, the hardness is all the way down to 0% hardness. And I'm just going to start painting in a little bit with that burn tool. What you'll notice is I'm darkening it down, which is what the burn tool does best. Uh, and it's giving a nice, dark, deep skin tone. Now, this scar is going to be a recessed scar, which you sometimes get when the skin uh, has divided and then healed recessed. It's going to be a darker scar. And you can take this as long as you've duplicated your layer and reduce the opacity as much as you want. As long as you have that underlying layer down there, the only thing that you'll see change is your scar and that's a simple scar that you can use. Now a lot of times when you've had a scar over time and it's healed, it looks lighter. Here's another technique you can use. I'm going to delete this layer and again duplicate my background layer. Now I'm going to go grab the Dodge tool. Also O on the shortcut, Shift O to switch between. I'm going to make sure the range is again set to shadows, exposure to about 7% this time and I'm just going to paint in in that same area with the dodge tool. And you'll see that it's lightening up the skin and it's giving the feel that you might have from an older, lighter scar. I'm just going to make it a little lighter than I think it actually should be maybe. Uh, bring my opacity up and so sometimes when I work just to make sure I get it done fast. And then if I decide later on I need less. I've always got that underlying layer and I can reduce this opacity and give it kind of a light old scar feel. This is not a very distinct scar. It's just for small scarring if you want. But we're about to create a little more drastic one. So go ahead and delete this layer once more and I'm going to show you a more intense scar. Suppose we want a newer, fresher scar and maybe even some stitches in there. What I'm going to do is go back, get my burn tool again, duplicate my background layer, and I'm once again going to paint in, similar to what I did before, just a scar down the cheek. And you can do this however dark you want until you get it the way you like. I like having the soft edge brush. It gives it a more dimensional feel uh, to the indention from the scar. Now that I have that, I would like some stitches on it. I'm going to create the stitches in this case by creating a new layer above my existing layer. I'm going to go grab the line tool in Photoshop. That is U on the shortcut. I'm going to make sure it's set to fill pixels, not to paths or to shape layers. I'm going to have my weight, in this case at about 2 pixels, mode to normal, full opacity. My foreground color, which will turn out to be my line color, is going to be black in this case. And I'm just going to click and drag out what I think should be uh, a stitch right there. If I see that and I like it and say, oh that's good, but maybe I want it a little bit bigger, I'm just going to control Z and bring my weight up to 4. Double my size, drag it out again. And I'm just going to continue to drag it out a couple of different places where I feel like there should be stitches. You can make as many of them as you want. In this case, I'm just going to make a few. 
Now, they look a little strange here. They stand out a lot from my image. They don't look like they fit in just yet. So I'm going to apply a blur filter to them. And in this case, I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, with my radius set to about 1%. This gives it a blur, which is a little more accurate to the rest of the image. Just keeps it from standing out. Now, generally, stitches over time, uh, don't they're not as obvious, and they kind of blend in. So I'm just going to drop the opacity down a little bit, as if they've been there a little while longer. You can change the color of your stitches if you want, depending on how you like it. Stitches themselves actually cause some scarring because they're inserted through the skin. So we're going to go back down to our background layer and try to apply some more um, scarring around where the stitches have been inserted. Uh, I'm just going to take my burn tool again, same exposure, and I'm just going to burn a little bit right around where the stitch holes would be for the inserting of these stitches. You can, of course, perfect these techniques, make it a lot more intricate if you'd like, uh, and go through and make the stitches look more realistic. I suggest that you reference some real pictures of stitches and scars. That'll help you a lot. Again, this is just meant to be a very fast technique that you can use if you're in a hurry trying to get an effect. Now, still, even though it's kind of looking better, it doesn't have the extreme quality I'm looking for, the newness of the scar. So we're going to add in a little more blood. What I'm going to do is create one more layer. It's important that this layer is below the stitches and above the image. So I'm just going to name my top layer Stitches. And then this layer I'm going to name Blood. On the Blood layer, we're going to set the blending mode to Multiply. I'm going to go over here to my color palette and pick a darker red. Hit OK. Select my brush tool. And in this case, my opacity is going to be pretty low, about 9%. That's what I want. I also want a hard, round brush. And I'm going to adjust that down to uh, a 0% softness again. So I guess you can start with a soft, round brush. I'm just going to draw in underneath the stitches and over top the scar this color red. You can see the effect that I'm getting is a darkened blood appearance, which is going to help lend to the authenticity of this being a deep gash that had to be stitched in. And uh, we'll just paint it in maybe a little more in the middle, less towards the edges as if the scar was bigger there. And you can see where we've caused the skin to look like it's separated. That's kind of the effect that we're going for. Now, of course, you can tweak this as much as you want. You can go back and work with the burn tool and maybe add some, some shading. You can set it to uh, mid-tones. Just add some shadows to make it look as though the skin has, uh, has been lifted up. And you can apply this as much as you want, anywhere you want, to create some pretty extreme uh, scars or, or just some really simple ones, but hopefully this helps. One more thing I want to do before I'm finished with it though is usually if it's a fresh scar there's a little bit of agitation around it so I'm gonna create one more layer again setting it to multiply. I like having multiple layers because it gives me more control over what I'm doing. I'm gonna grab my brush tool, enlarge it, And I'm going to just drop the opacity down a little bit more to about 6%. And I'm going to draw in some redness around the scar. This just gives kind of a more bruised appearance as if it just happened. And there we go. You could tweak it as much as you want. Take these techniques, develop them, perfect them. It's just some simple ways to make some fast scarring effects in Photoshop. Hope this helps.